Avengers Assemble! Today we are looking at the Diamond Select Iron Man 3, Iron Man Mark 42, and Mandarin Mini Mate figures. Now, if you remember last year from the Avengers, where there was a lackluster set of three and three quarter inch figures, the Mini Mates proved to be my favorite collectible I picked up. Now that's slightly debatable now that some of the 6-inch figures came out, but I really think the Mini Mates captured the Avengers better than anything else I picked up from that movie, and I picked up quite a bit. Iron Man 3, I've had pretty much the opposite problem I did with Avengers. I haven't wanted to buy anything. The assemblers look like crap. The other 3 and 3 quarter inch figures are pathetic. The micro mugs, I was pretty happy with my purchase, but I went a little crazy with. Still waiting for those legends based on the movie to show up in stores. I've seen some people have them already in their targets and stuff. I have been unable to find them. But as of this recording, these midi mates just hit stores today, and I was quite excited to get my hands on them, remembering my fond memories of the Avengers set. And what better place to start than with what at least most people thought going into this movie would be our two lead characters or things, Iron Man Mark 42 and the Mandarin. Now, I'm going to put it out here right now. I'm doing exactly what I do with my Avengers reviews. These are spoiler-filled reviews. So if you haven't seen Iron Man 3, if you weren't one of those people that made it like the second biggest opening weekend ever, take a break, go watch the movie, Come back and watch this review, because I'd rather not ruin everything for you before you see the movie, but I'm not going to pull any punches on what I want to talk about relating to these characters. So let's start off first and foremost with the Mandarin, and they made really good use of the Mini Mate's body here. They added a lot of stuff to make him a very unique figure. First up, it's worth mentioning, every one of these figures comes with a little display stand, a clear display stand with a single peg on it, which is great. When I got the Avengers figures, I only ended up getting one of these to go with four characters. Iron Man came with his own display base, but these things make displaying your mini-mates much easier, so glad to have it. The Mandarin also comes with a very, very tiny little gun accessory, which is very well detailed. You can see here lots of great detail on here, the triggers there, the slide on it's there really nicely done for a very very tiny 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 little gun accessory so very very well done on diamond's part there as for the character himself start from the bottom up he has some basic little brown shoes that are pretty basic mini made shoes they're painted up the leg a little bit to look like boots his pants are just brown pants i believe he actually had camo pants in the movie but i might be mistaken he has his belt on there, he has his green shirt, and then we get this huge robe piece over top, which is really cool. It splits down the side so that you can fit his arms on there. It's got the hood in the back, it has the gold trim. Just really, really cool looking. A fantastic job on that robe. I wish there was an option where you could put the hood on him, but that's probably asking a lot. The sleeves go with the robe. If you take the robe off, his arms are mismatched to his green shirt here, so it doesn't look quite right, which is a little bit of a bummer because it's kind of nice with some of these mini mates to be able to change their costumes up a little. This one just doesn't look as good as it could. But some great detailing around the cuff here, little gold spots, a little ruffle at the end. And he actually has all 10 rings, even though he doesn't really have any fingers. Standard little C-clip mini made hand there, but great detail getting all 10 rings on there. As for the head, well, it looks about as much like Ben Kingsley as I would think it would. It's not too bad of a representation. The beard is painted on there. Like all mini mates, he has no nose. Angry eyebrows, little crow's feet around the eyes. Not too bad. His hair is a separate piece. It's gray hair with a little top knot on there. Decently done, but he also comes with another hair option. You could pull this off 
And then you could put on this other hair, which I like better in theory, but not in practice. It's basically the same hair we had before, but this has the beard actually sculpted into it, so it comes down over the front. The problem is the shoulder pads on his robe are so thick you really can't get it down far enough where you can see his mouth. And that's what I'd really like to get out of this. If you take the rope off, it'll go down just a little bit further and it makes the character look a lot better. And here it just kind of looks like it's hanging there. It looks like it's kind of water falling off the shelf that is his clothing. Not the most impressive beard I've seen. But still, really cool that they gave us the option to display him either way. That's definitely something that not every figure company would give us, and gotta appreciate that. That's pretty cool. So, depending on what you think is the better look for the Mandarin between these two, it's still basically accomplishing the same look either way, but you can either have 3D beard or painted beard. Just imagine if they'd given us that option with Ruffalo Hulk's chest hair. Next up, we have the Iron Man Mark 42. And if you remember with the Avengers Mini Mates, I bought two sets. I bought the one that was Iron Man and Hulk and the other that was Cap and Thor. And the Iron Man and Hulk set I thought was so superior to the Cap and Thor one just because the Iron Man and Hulk were both really well done characters with lots of extra pieces. So I was thrilled that we'd be getting, well, quite a few Iron Men in this line. But the Mark 42 is the prominent armor from the movie, and it looks like we have a very similar sculpt to what we did with Avengers. But if we bring in the Mark 7, we can see there's not really a whole lot of shared parts. The underbody, of course, is a shared piece, but the boots are different, the gauntlets are different, the chest piece is different, the helmet's different. Well, you can't tell right now, but the helmet is different. So even though it looks like reused parts, it's not. They've even gone so far that with the Mark 7, he had the built-in shoulder pieces to the chest. On the 42, it's actually a piece that goes onto the arm itself, which is pretty neat. So there's some great detailing on the boots. That sandy gold color mixed with a great metallic red. Even on the back here, there's some detail besides the copyright info there. Gauntlets are very well done, very bulky and big and just plain Iron Man looking. The upper shoulder piece is pretty nice. It does hinder the articulation, but I'll get into that in a minute. As some design here on his torso, for his mid-torso there. We have the bulky upper armor here with the arc light in there. Really cool. Some great detailing on the back as well, where you can see where there'd be flaps and everything. A nice ridge to the helmet. Turn around. Just perfect Iron Man face on there, exactly what it should look like. Mark 42 armor has definitely grown on me. I didn't like it when I saw the Comic-Con pictures of it, but the more I've seen it and seen the movie, the aesthetics of it don't bug me as much. The fact that the armor is pathetic and falls apart at the drop of a hat, now that bugs me, but the armor itself is not that bad. We could take the helmet off and we have our Tony Stark head, and then we could bring in our Tony Stark hair looks really cool. I love that feature with Mini Mates. We bring back in the Avengers Tony Stark. We can see yet again it's a completely new head sculpt. It actually looks like the cylinder of the head may be a little thinner. The other Tony looks a little chubby. The hair is different. The facial paint's different. I really dig that they gave us this separate version of Tony and they didn't just try to recycle parts. That's definitely something that makes me happy. Wait, we're not done. We get another Iron Man helmet, and you can see this one doesn't look quite right. And that's why. The faceplate is removable, but the problem is it doesn't really stay in well at all. Plus side is, you have one with the sculpted in face mask, so why do you really need a removable one? I don't think Mini Mates are particularly a good kid's toy. I don't think this is something you'd want to give your kid to play with, because I think kids are a little too rough and these aren't exactly the most robust figures ever. But it was a neat idea to give us that. I loved with Avengers that they gave us the open helmeted Mark 7 option. But in this movie, he doesn't really do that. It's the faceplate comes off. And it's cool that we have the removable faceplate. And I would definitely display him like this with the faceplate gone and the Tony Stark head showing through. So while the gimmick itself doesn't really work, the pegs on the face mask aren't really long enough to fit into these holes correctly, and 
this helmet's so thin that there's not really much depth for the pegs to go into anyway. It really could be something cool that, that just didn't manage to come across quite as well as it should have. But I applaud them for trying, and it really is not a detriment to the figure to just have it like this or something. If it didn't come with the full face mask, if this was your only option, I'd be pissed. But it's not, so I don't care. Articulation the same on both figures. We have a ball jointed head, can turn left and right, up and down, all that good stuff. Hindered, of course, by the costuming. Ball jointed shoulder is very limited here on the 42, but the Mandarin has some better articulation there. You could also swivel them forward and back. Bend at the elbow. Rotate at the wrist, or in this case, the gauntlet. Rotate at the waist. Ball jointed legs forward back out to the side. Bend at the knee. And the Mandarin can swivel at the foot. Iron Man can't because of his big square boots. Overall, I think these are great figures, no matter how you feel about the movie. I think if you've been enough of an Iron Man fan to follow him this far, if you've been picking up the Mini Mates or just figures in general this far along the line, that you'll probably be happy with these figures. Sure, the Mark 42 kind of sucks in the movie and falls apart at the drop of a hat. And sure, the Mandarin was an actor playing the Mandarin. I still love the way Ben Kingsley delivered the lines as the Mandarin, and I kind of liked his persona when he was just being a drunken idiot. Granted, I don't know if I've ever read an Iron Man comic with the Mandarin, so I really don't have much attachment to him. I've read a lot of Iron Man. The Mandarin just doesn't seem to come up all that often. And honestly, okay, going off topic a little bit here, I do have a theory about the Mandarin. Are we sure he wasn't just acting double on top of everything? Are we sure he wasn't just like... Oh crap, I'm going to get my brains blown out because this guy in front of me with a gun while I was passed out and I'm going to get shot. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm trying to retcon things a little too bad just because I thought it was a little silly and alienating, but whatever. I recommend these figures. These figures are cool. The Mandarin a little less so. The armor, the Mark Free 2, I really like. I'm not a huge fan of that stupid faceplate thing, but really doesn't matter. We have a way around it. It's not that big of a deal. And you could do a cool pose like this where he's holding it instead of letting it fly and smack him in the face or something. So not too bad there. Definitely recommend this set. This is not a bad set to pick up. You can find it at your local comic shop. Also going to hit Toys R Us soon. So yeah, definitely go and pick up the Mark 42 and Mandarin set. And also, make sure you check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook. There'll be a link below. I'm actually putting up an exclusive review over there because I had something I wanted to review and it wasn't quite a toy. So I thought, well, what do I do with this? Yeah, it's up on the Facebook page. So go check it out there. It's a special bonus for everyone cool enough to subscribe to me on Facebook. I do appreciate everyone who likes the channel over there as well as subscribes here, of course. And until next time, this has been another Outside the Box review. I can almost get to the end of a review, but then I say the wrong cranberry.